Oh my god. Well, Jeez, let us know if it goes normal at any point. Wait. I heard your voice. Does it work? Oh my god. All right, so do we have it now? Oh my gosh. Guys, I swear, I try to be professional as I can. It just never works out for me when it comes to like video stuff at all. I was kind of digging the chipmunk sounds. They were so cute. <laughs> all right, not going to let that throw me off getting back on track. So, hi everyone. Officially, I'll have to edit out the beginning part of the video. Uh, but hi everyone, I'm Timothy Von Rieden, better known as Von Art Online, and I'm joined by Josh, who will be moderating today and acting as, I guess, chipmunk moderator. And today I'm going to be working on the Queen of Hearts, continuing on from last week. And you probably didn't hear any of what I was talking about earlier, but essentially uh, I'm pretty excited about working on this one. Uh, I had an extra time this morning to find more inspiration and reference. And I even took a reference picture of myself. That's why I so showed a picture randomly without you guys understanding what I was saying about it. And that is what we'll be working on today. So if you guys have any questions or uh, comments that you want to you know, chat along with, just put at Von Art or at Schwa in the comment section and we will do our best to answer them. Uh, I'm going to probably jump right into this and start detailing. I think her face I want to do first. Uh, or no, I'll do the hands first and then I'll go to the face. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any... Oh yeah, we have a new mic, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> so if there are any other issues, please let us know right away. Otherwise, we're going to sound like chipmunks again. And I would rather not have that be the video capture today. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, <laughs> Everyone uh, liked the chipmunk sounds. I don't know what you're so wrapped up about. Oh, it says it's quiet. Uh, it's. Tr I'm turning it up slowly. It's, it was just under the yellow. Now it's kind of like hitting just at the yellow, I think. So we're good. All right. Well, let us know yeah, if we'll it see. needs to be a little louder. But we'll jump into it. If you guys want to put where you're watching from, we'll do the shout outs as we get going here and as people join in. All right. And I'm going to start going on these hands. All right. Yeah, it's so good to have you back with us today, Fem. Fem's here today. Hey, Fem. Yeah. How are you doing? I see we have Ella here today, Felix, Jens. Who else we got? I saw a bunch of people. Oscar's here today. Hello, hello. Lena's here today. Good to see everyone today. Oh, Lena says, I finally have all my other life duties done so I can just art while watching. <laughs> yeah. That's a good feeling. Yeah, hopefully you guys are also working alongside me. If you want to put what you're working on at the end of the stream, um, in the Discord below, we have a link for live chat discussion. And I'd like to see what people are working on while I'm doing the streams here. Tobern tuning in from Taco Tacoma. Tacoma. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Lena, sorry, I'm the tiniest bit of um, I'm the tiniest bit of hard of hearing, so I always ask streamers to turn the sound up. Yeah, let me know if it's better now. I did turn it up on the mic itself now because it's as loud as it can go on the computer. I can get a little smidge more. Mattia, hello again. It's a delight to join in. Hope you're doing well. Hello, hello. Yeah, see, Ella says I preferred you as chipmunks. <laughs> can we change it back? That sound was so cute. <laughs> it's so funny. I have like a dream to be seen as like Annie Stagg or Justin or Bobby Chu where it's like actually professional all the time. But every stream, it seems like something goofy happens and it like the universe refuses to let me be serious on these things or like have no issues technically. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why this keeps happening every time. Damn, it Actually, last week went pretty well. I don't think there was any technical problems. Uh, 
Because the iPad stayed on fine. See, I don't even remember last week. Yeah. But then this weekend, I had to do a recording for the uh, tablet that I was sent, and the audio was terrible. Uh, if you guys watch, I have the new review on YouTube right now, but I had to edit that audio so bad because the old mic we were using, it just sounded like I was in a warehouse, and it, it was just terrible. I'm like, this was supposed to be a really good mic, and then I got this one, and then it, we sounded like chipmunks right away. I'm like, why? <laughs> Like, I, I feel like one of those old people that are like, technology doesn't work around me. And I, I feel like it just comes true all the time. Yeah, that was weird, though, that microphone with your Mac. If for some reason, it was yeah, not that was working. terrible. <laughs> Elena, but the goof is what we're here for. <laughs> we love the goofs. Well, thank you. I'm glad you guys like the goofs because I know on my end, I, it drives me crazy. <laughs> Sam says, I'm actually working on teaching my cats the importance of Tim's streams and bonding through cuddling together uh. at the moment. <laughs> oh, Astrid's been really cuddly lately, but then this morning she never, she always comes up in the morning to cuddle with me. So it's like a cute way to start the day off is Astrid cuddling, but I can tell when she's mad at me because now she doesn't come up and she still has that cone on because I took it off. I literally took it off for an hour yesterday. She has a cone on because she has like a little cut on her neck. So I took the cone off for an hour just to give her a little break. She could clean herself. Literally busted open the tiny scab that was there and somehow made it bleed again. I was like, come on, Astrid. So I think she's mad at me again because I had to put the cone back on. Uh, Tilburn says, I've been creatively dead for a minute, so I'm coloring a James Jean page, which is nice. Mm -hmm. He has a coloring book? I didn't even know that. Them. I thought you were just underwater life drawing before. <laughs> uh. It was a fun sound. <laughs> Do you feel better now? I mean, I guess. The only th the reason why it bothers me so much I is... I said you get really upset. Because for bad. YouTube afterwards, when I edit a video, um, if it's a live video, if you clip any of it, you can't see the live chat replay anymore which I think people like seeing on the YouTube videos. So like for this one, if I cut out the chipmunk video, we won't be able to see any of the comments anymore. But if I leave it in, people that come to my page are like, what the heck is this? You know, so it's like this weird conundrum where I just want live streams to go smoothly, but maybe this is like the universe's way of telling me to not take things seriously. But it's really hard for someone like me because I try to take work very seriously. I don't take myself very seriously, but I take what I do pretty serious. Uh, and I feel like when live streams are so inconsistent and off, I just feel like that's how people then view you. Which I know maybe that's just a perspective issue, but I do feel like, I don't know, it bothers yeah, me. Yeah, we gotta let go of that. Otoburn says he does have a few coloring books or pages on his store. Yeah, That's see, I didn't even cool. know. I still like those little paint by number things a lot, actually. I mean, I get requests for myself to do them a lot on my Instagram DMs. Uh, I don't think I ever will do it, though. Uh, I think I like my art being black and white, or at least my traditional stuff like this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I'm not super into the idea of making a coloring book for my own stuff. Maybe one don't... day. Never say never. How know? do you do it over shading? Or do people kind of just color, just over, color the over it? Shading? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think James Jean also has more line art pieces, where I think mine are a little more uh, shade heavy or like uh, gradation heavy. So I yeah, I don't think my stuff would be great for coloring over but who knows could be wrong have you ever colored just for fun colored over something you did or no yeah. okay just to try it I mean, it's fine uh, Jen says a good idea you can add a description in the video to skip forward because you could just link the timestamp of when it goes back to normal I mean like just yes. skip, click here I that's a good idea I might do that I mean, this has been more than just like this live stream. It's like, this has been years of me feeling like I need to step it up. 
then every time I try to, like, I get a new mic, and then we're chipmunks for three minutes. That was like, so weird, too, because I recorded it. I did a recording beforehand, and it, the sound was fine. So I don't know what caused I have it no to idea. Yeah, change like that. This is maybe instead of showing your drawing already on next stream, you could create a fun disclaimer to stick with the goofs page. So always be professional. Actually, you could just have. No, I'm that wouldn't work. I was thinking you could have two separate where one's just like the clip video for people to watch, and then you could still have the full live stream, <laughs> but like only link it on Discord or something. I, I would know. say I would not want that to be public. Yeah. There's always going to be next week. I know. I'll shake it off. I'm, I'm pretty good at not letting things bother me for too long. But I'm also like, this hand looks like garbage. The what? <laughs> I think when I'm in like a oh. bad funk like mood, then it affects my drawings a little bit. All right. I think I'm going to record this part for the TikTok or for the reels. Of like, when something doesn't look great, Literally, take an eraser and erase that garbage out of your drawing. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, so if you ever see me pull out my phone for a second, it's because I'm trying to record uh, more video content as kind of social media moves in that direction. I'm adapting and adjusting. As I really should recommend all of you guys to start doing two more. Oh, Sarah Bear is here. Hello, hello. Came to say hi. I haven't been around here in ages. Hope you guys are fine uh, during these times. Take care. I love the artwork as always. Well, thank Sarah, you. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, we have Femme and Sarah back this week. I'm going to do the other hand first. Hmm. Lord, I need one of those erasers. <laughs> the, you got, uh, oh, needed? Are those still the ones you got from that? Mm -hmm. The whatever it was that is the contest thing, right? Mm hmm. Because you just were stocked on those. Yeah, so if you guys have never used one of these before, these are kneaded erasers. You can kind of mold and bend them into whatever shape you want. And then whenever I want to do like points, uh, I mean, normally I'll use my mono zero for like edging it Do out. Do have to Casper chew that too? I mean, yeah, everything. Okay. But uh, for this, I like to mold it down to a point and then either dab it. Like if I'm going to do a highlight on her shoulder, I'll probably use this and kind of dab down. Oh, I'm not even on the screen. Oops. Um, I'll dab it and then kind of move down and it'll create a nice little sheen and highlight. So yeah, I think these are imperative for traditional arts, especially if you're using pencil. So yeah, go get one. And they're really cheap, too. Oh, Felix says, if it helps, I feel like you're already there, and any stepping up is just an extra on top of what you already have in terms of skill and imagination, which is more than enough. Mm. Well, thank you. I think uh, I've been kind of kicked by social media this past year. My account, my Instagram account, I don't know if a lot of you know this, but it got suspended last uh, June and well from advertising from advertising yeah but it has affected my Instagram heavily the past like eight months I've never I haven't been stagnated or like plateaued on social media in I want to say like eight years and since September my account has just plateaued and then draw Tober was really weird for me because I felt like I was putting a lot of extra effort into what I was doing and it was just not growing. It, in fact, I was actually losing followers from what I was posting. And it was just really disheartening. It was just like not great. And Draltober alone is usually pretty stressful uh, to run. And it was just a lot of like feelings of uh, not being good enough. And it was, it was weird. I felt like I was back in 
early college or not even college I felt more confident uh probably like early high school and it was just a really weird feeling for me to be back in and kind of still am in to be honest uh but I have so much distractions to keep me moving forward uh and even like these streams are kind of one of those distractions so then when a stream like doesn't go right at the beginning it's just another example of just things are just not seeming to do well for me right now and it's really frustrating uh especially when i feel like it's not for lack of effort oh my god it looks terrible what is going on with me this morning i need to like shake this off both of those hands look terrible all right <sighs> relax um and i'm sure for a lot of you guys when things aren't going well with what you're creating, it really does affect your mood and like your personal life. And for me, it, it they're so connected that when I get so frustrated with my drawings, it really does put me in kind of a bad mood. Uh, and I, poor Josh has to deal with it because I'm not someone that talks about it. I, I just kind of internalize it and then I'll deal with it on my own time and then it usually doesn't last more than a day, I feel like but I that's... like to be alone and I like to be in silence. And I think that kind of bothers some people around me sometimes where they want to help. But to me, the best way to help is just to like have a moment to breathe, get it out, get all my thoughts kind of situated and figured out and then move forward. So then when I'm live like this, it's frustrating when <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't have a moment to just sit and be still for a moment, you know, because you have to be live and drawing. But maybe that's good. Maybe this was the outlet I needed. Uh, maybe that was one of those moments that were meant to happen so that I could tell you all how it's been mm -hmm. and kind of get some of my frustrations out for a second. So it'll be good. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of what I expected. I don't want to say expected, but I feel like dating an artist, there's just going to be be some days, and that's okay. Granted, I do want to help. That's my issue is I always want to help, but then I think that annoys you. So, Yeah, I'm definitely one space. of those people I don't, I don't like. It. God, this sounds so... <laughs> it's so aged and like, oh, you, you should ask for help. It's, but I'm one of those people I actually really don't like asking for help. Like, if I, there's a thing I can do on my own, I really don't like asking for help. The only times I like asking for help is if I know I'm not good at something. So, like, fixing a fridge or a car. Yeah, I'll be the first one to call. I won't even attempt to try to fix it most of the time on my own. Because I'm like, I, I just know I'm going to probably make it worse if I try to uh, do it myself. You got some encouragement coming in to me. Uh, Ella says, if it's any consultation, I believe you to be one of the most professional artists out there. And it's not just about technology on your side, but your attitude towards art. Oh, or, yeah. Well, thank you. That's sweet. Um, <clears throat> Jen says, I've been going around reading wikis on The Witcher because some of the elements compels me, especially the reimagining of mythos. Do you have any series you read up on but never watch? Uh, sadly, I feel like any book that I read, even an audiobook, I started one, what was it, yesterday or the day before? There are a lot of nonfiction. There are a lot of, like, tips on, like, well-being or business practices. Uh, I would like to get more into, like, a, a good fantasy book. I read this one called The Language of Thorns. Was it two years ago? And it's, like, a collection of short stories that are all, like, set in a fantastical manner. And I thought it was excellent. I just, I loved it. Uh, but it's it's really hard for me to want to read uh, fiction because if, if it's bad, I feel like it is this giant waste of time. And I know I shouldn't see it that way. But if I was honest, that's definitely how I see it. So I need like a lot of people to recommend me something or a lot of um, people that I trust their taste level to tell me a suggestion to read. And then um, I'll give it like a chapter so sadly not at the moment but i guess if i was to recommend one language of thorns i thought was really excellent and if you're not a big reader like myself uh the fact that it was a bunch of short stories compiled together helped because i didn't feel then overwhelmed by like a 300 page novel it was like maybe a 30 to 50 page story each and that i can definitely knock down 
-hmm. Oscar says, any good tips on how to think or approach getting a better feel for 3D and depth when drawing? I've tried perspective grids, but it just doesn't feel practical. <laughs> uh, it's weird because I draw more, I guess this is more of a 3D term too, I draw more orthographically than I do perspectively. But I will say learning 3D modeling back when I was in college really, really helped. Uh, I think it was it was good for me to see what I was creating in a 3D space and then how shadows and lighting would affect it. So honestly, maybe it's not so much drawing uh, to help your understanding of perspective, but maybe learning um, more like three-dimensional practices. And it doesn't even have to be anything crazy uh, you could do like a little tutorial on even like the basic shapes and forms in Blender or 3ds Max or whatever 3D software is the main one nowadays and uh, give that a shot. But I guess if I was to give any advice on drawing more in a perspective, uh, try to imagine while you're working how the shapes and or the forms would work with one another. And for me, I know I like overlapping forms a lot now. Uh, the older I get, the more I realize how much more life and presence something has. If you have, like even with a body, having things cross or intersect. Because usually there's so many characters in like a T pose or in a static pose, and they just read really lifeless. So even with this mermaid, I have her one arm literally crossing her entire chest, and then the other hand coming back over her shoulder and neck area. And it kind of creates this relationship between the forms that you're creating and I try to do that with my work and in, in a lot of ways too it helps guide the viewer in the direction that they look through your piece because uh, this is more I guess art fundamentals but uh, the lines that you have in your drawing usually point to focus areas so in this case her hair it's all kind of pointing to her face and then I guess this would be called the golden ratio effect or the circle effect. Her arms are creating this circle, so it's like this pattern of swirl, and it's kind of pulling it back to the face area. And especially when I do the flip and I do the, the copy-paste with her, it's going to be a lot of swirling effect and create kind of this infinity symbol uh, navigation throughout your piece. So. It might not even be that you are having struggle drawing perspectively, but maybe it's the way that your lines are pointing are pointing off the subject matter or off from focus points. And I would try to reel that back in and try to really understand where do you want the viewers to be looking. And with people, it's usually pretty easy because most likely you want them to be looking at the face. And I know for me, that's why I'll usually have a lot of these subtle hints to look back at the face. And speaking of the face, I might try to go in and detail the face a little bit more. Maybe that will help me feel more confident about going back into the hands then. Yeah, we'll just stay away from those for a little bit. <clears throat> uh, Jens asks, have you ever considered new art sites? There are a few new sites up. Uh, I, I guess you'd have to explain which ones. <laughs> Um, I mean, there's been those invites we got for a couple of those. I forget the names of them, too. Like, some of those newer ones popping up. It it would be really hard for me to want to invest in another website, unless if it had some legitimacy behind it. Uh, I know that there are certain ones that I've been solely navigating into, like uh, TikTok. And even TikTok, though, I wasn't, like, one of the first to jump on it, but I was definitely one of the earlier ones because it, it was exciting. It was new. Uh, and then slowly it kind of proved itself, but if it's just like a static image posting site, I think it's really hard to want to get into that scene when I think it's becoming more and more evident that video content is going to be the future for not only artists, but just in general. And I think for me personally, I think investing more time in reels on Instagram, TikTok, obviously, and then Facebook are probably going to be my three that I'll really focus on. And then I've been really trying to give way more time and energy to Patreon. And so far, it's actually been proving to be very successful because I'm getting the feedback that I kind of wanted. I'm 
posting every day uh, what I'm drawing and it just feels good. I feel like I'm in a routine that feels good. I think that's why it, I'm not as bothered that things like my Instagram has been so stagnated because I know that I've been doing a lot of good work outside of just Instagram and um, I'm really putting a lot of effort into hoping that pays off. So we'll see. Hmm. Oh, oh, Sean Wing says, if it's any consultation, I just spent $434.41 yesterday oh. on framing three of your art pieces in museum glass for my future house. Oh my gosh. Your work is worth it. Well, thank oh, you that's so really much. sweet. I mean, you always love seeing when people have like stuff on their walls yeah. too. I don't know. That's got to feel really good seeing that. It's, it's one of those things where I think a lot of you guys will understand too if you do art. You always feel as good as your last art piece. Uh, and like, yeah, I'll, I'll have the imp imposter syndrome from time to time. But especially when social media is not going well, you feel imposter syndrome hard. And then it's like this weird desire to gain what you had back. And I hate being put in that position because then I feel like I'm rushing things or I'm not thinking clearly. Uh, and yeah, I do think that affects my day to day. That affects how I view what I'm working on. and. Mm. It's I feel, a weird time. I feel like not being at conventions as much too. I do think at the end of the day you really like conventions in terms of connecting with the people that come up to your booth, talking with people. I, I think do. not having as much of that either right now makes it feel more, I don't know, it, it makes it hit harder maybe that you're not able to connect with people in person as much either. I mean, it I would know. be a really nice distraction right now. <laughs> Yeah, I know we have one next month. We're going to Anime Milwaukee, which is basically our hometown show. And we have literally like 14 artists coming to the house staying <laughs> here. So I think that'll be a really fun kind of refresh button on the year. And uh, I mean, weirdly, I actually do feel good about life right now. It's it's weird. I'm, I'm, I may be sounding like things are hitting me really hard, but it's hitting me hard in like a very subtle way. Cause like most of how I'm feeling is pretty great, but when it comes when it whenever I think about like Instagram or the way that social media is going right now, I do get this weird pang of like <sighs> it's just like a weight that I feel gets put on my shoulders, and I'm trying my best to figure it out. But I'm sure like a lot of you that are trying to navigate gaining followers right now on social media, um, just know that even someone like myself who has had previous success with you know gaining a following count and feeling like I know what I'm doing uh, still struggle when they feel like they're slipping a little bit or they're not gaining anything. Uh, and I think it's like a universal thing that's felt throughout all the art friends I talk about is it's, it's frustrating because a lot of the times we just want to make art. We don't want to have to be trying to figure out what's the best way to get ahead on TikTok or whatever it is. And what do we have to do on Instagram? Is it going live? Is it making more reels? Like, what do we need to do to stay relevant and current? And it is a weird game sometimes to have to play. I'm not always uh, super frustrated by it like I am right now. Uh, some of the times I'm like, well, that's the game. And, you know, right now I might not be playing it super well. But then there are times where I'm like, okay, I want to play it well. And then after a couple months of, like, trying to play it well, you're like, why I'm not something's not clicking and I think for uh, someone like me it's I want to I want to understand why it's not clicking so bad uh, that when I can't figure it out it just it weighs on me so anyways I'm feeling a little better I'm working on a face right now light light lolly it says it's reassuring seeing traditional artists making it because when I'm on Twitter all I see is digital concept art or animation related stuff which was making me very anxious lately that if I don't switch over to the media, there's no hope. Uh, yeah. Uh, I still kind of have that, that worry a little bit. I mean, it's weird because at cons you feel so much better because being a traditional artist, you actually stand out because there's so much digital um, and color, obviously, that you feel like, you're standing out and a lot of people I think see you more as like a distinctive booth 
And that feels pretty nice, admittedly. But then when you go online, and right now it favors so heavily uh, video process, obviously. But then also I think there is something about color specifically that it intrigues people. I don't think grayscale is as visually interesting to general audience. And that's something that I just have to live with and accept. And I think for a long time I was accepting it because things were going well. So like, how can you not accept it? Uh, but obviously when push comes to shove, like right now, well, what happens when it starts to slip? And I think I'm feeling that slip and I just want to make sure I don't fall. And s thankfully I have projects that are keeping me pretty distracted right now. I'm working on not only this mermaid card deck, but I'm doing a tarot deck. And then I have that five foot drawing, uh, which if you're following me on Patreon, you can see the, the progress on all of those. And I feel like it's reassuring to have these projects to uh, kind of distract me right now. Because if I didn't have these big projects to look forward to, I think I would be just every day feeling that social media crunch and the, the burn that can come with it. So anyways, <laughs> I, I can relate to a lot of you right now on uh, if you're feeling like you're struggling with social media. Uh, Jen says, sometimes talking about it helps, even if you don't need help, because putting words on the problem is what helps. Yeah. You're pretty good at at least. I mean, mostly because I'm always like, Tim, what's up? Tim, what's up? And then finally he'll tell me. But you're good at talking to the cat and stuff and friends, too, about what's going on. Oh, yeah. I'm not, like, sh I'm not shy about talking about, like, when I feel like I'm struggling. As long as I have like a moment to figure out how I feel about it, kind of, for the most part, first, I feel very open about talking with it, like the people in my life. Um, as long as I, I don't ever want to feel like a burden, because uh, I, I know that nowadays, I feel like there's just a lot of people that use their friends and family as, oh, how do I word this? There are times where me and my, my best friend Kat, and who Josh also really loves, um, she is a personal trainer, and she feels like a lot of the time she's not even personally training people on working out, but that she's like this unlicensed therapist because a lot of people just want to talk about um, what's wrong in their life. And it's, it's not even their fault necessarily. I think they just have a lot of maybe pain that they're just carrying with them. But I feel like sometimes we outlet it onto people that maybe aren't ready or willing to hear all the time. And I know that's happened to me before where I felt I was just, it wasn't like a reciprocal friendship. I felt like I was there for them to listen to their issues, but they weren't really there to listen to mine. Or it would be like quickly move off of what I felt I was going through because it wasn't as severe or deep as what they were going through. So... Anyways. <laughs> uh, Femme says, take a breath, hug a cat or a Josh, <laughs> and listen to the people. Uh, technology problems has nothing to do with how professional you are. I mean, we're all here to watch you draw, hear your thoughts. I totally agree. <laughs> I mean, I always take a hug, but uh, like you're not very, uh, Tim's not always like very touchy and he's not like in a, no. a funk. When I'm in a funk, I the worst thing people can do to me is like, Hug, yes. Can hug I put me. an example? Can we do an example of the motion you do? If yes. I can hug you, hang on. This is when Tim's in a funk and I'm trying to be gooey. Oh, I'll like, just be oh like... hi Tim. Hi. <laughs> no funk hugs for mm -hmm. Tim. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> but like, that's not to say they aren't good. I think I'm like one of those people. I that's not one of my what is that love languages. That's not what I want or need. <laughs> I think for me, it's giving me space is definitely my number one thing. And then um, acts is my love language. So like if I'm in a funk and then Josh, like it was, what was it yesterday? You made dinner when I didn't ask you to. Yeah. Oh, that was really nice to me. I would much prefer <laughs> that. You don't really have to always ask me to make dinner, but I did make dinner. You did make dinner. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm more of the, like... You're more of the... If I'm down, I usually yeah. want to be, like, snuggled, but... Which is fair. Yeah. And I think 
so I sometimes project that onto other people, but I'm like, no, can't do that. Yeah. Well, I think because I do the same thing, I think because I like acts of service is like my love language. I try to do that for other people thinking that they'll feel loved from me by doing things for them. But uh, not even not really you, but definitely with previous roommates I've had, I felt like I would go out of my way to help them with like things around the house, uh, but it wouldn't really get acknowledged that much. Uh, so I guess that's mm -hmm. something for all of you too. I, I mean, if you're in a relationship or if you have friends, just acknowledging what their love language is and then not just projecting your love language onto other people and then recognizing that everyone is a little different for what they need and want. Um, so catching up. So we're a little behind on things, but Felix says perspective grids definitely feel super constricting when you do it. And for characters, it often just doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, Felix says I would also recommend looking into Blender and make prototypes for architecture and other perspective heavy things that way. Yep. I would agree. Um, Elena says you were the one that who got me started on making more dynamic poses. Now I never just draw someone standing straight towards the viewer with nothing out of line. Oh, I'm glad uh, to hear that. Though currently I'm drawing a relaxed sitting character at a three quarter angle and doing the sketch was torture for me. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. I mean, my stuff tends not to be that dynamic, uh, but I, I don't mind. I think it's also okay to admit that maybe there's certain style types that even if they're popular, they might not just be for you. Because, like, you'll never see something I draw being, like, coming toward the camera and super angular and uh, action lines everywhere and explosions. And for some artists, it works really well. Admittedly, I do follow some artists that do that. But for my own work, personally, I just, I like the very old school traditional way of, like, posing people and uh, it feeling more figurative and almost uh like the way that their body is positioned it feels like it was intentional to like help add to the personality of the piece or the story of the piece and even with something as simple as like this mermaid uh with the heart suits i want everything very flowy and very light uh and her pose i'm trying to represent that so it's not like a strong pose it's not very angular everything is very relaxed and very soft curvy and um it, it like adds to the character that i'm trying to implement onto her <clears throat> lena says i just hate making art reels and watching art reels but trying really hard to try to get to like them as they do so much better than images. So much better right now. Yeah, to anyone watching that's trying to get ahead on social media right now, I'm telling you video content 100% is the way to do it. Mm. I'm curious when it's gonna shift again. Cause it always does end up shifting eventually back to something else. Mm, I think it's gonna get worse for video. Oh really? I think it's. Or for static images. I don't think static images are ever going to be, like, the main thing ever again. And it's kind of sad to say that out loud, but, yeah, I guess that is how I feel deep down. It's so weird, though. I mean, there's... I, I forgot who said it earlier, too. There's got to be other... Oh, there you are. Because you other websites. But just things that are more art-focused or static image or just being able to take a piece in over getting snippets of a piece and not really getting it able to like really look at it and observe it there will always know. be alternative websites that do that but they'll never be like the main focus and i think why instagram was so great for a lot of artists it was like everyone was using instagram and you could be a 2d artist or or, or digital it doesn't really matter but you could create static images and you could get popular online where now it's like the only way to get popular or seen is you all have to documents the process in like a video format hmm. which a lot of us we didn't go to school for like video editing or you know a lot of the times it's not even our passion so it's it feels forced 
uh, a lot of the time. And I feel grateful that I actually, I had my previous job that was very focused on video editing. So I feel like I can carry a lot of those skill sets over. But I feel really bad for a lot of my friends right now that the transition has been very difficult. And I, I don't even know how to help them, you know. Uh, Felix says it. It honestly sort of dis is disheartening that Instagram is dying and TikTok definitely isn't really for artists and spending so much time making video content is not for everyone. Yeah. Well, especially when it takes time just to do the drawing itself, then to have to create a video to basically try to sell it in a way, when you think about it, you're like trying to sell it to appeal to people. Yeah. So even though you made something that you're proud of, you still have to make this video that also puts it in this perspective that will make it more entrancing to watch. I don't know. It's it's bizarre. It's very weird. Yeah. But you're right. It's like we can't just create art content nowadays. You also have to create uh, appealing video editing content that shows off the drawing that you're proud of in the best light. And the worst part uh, about a lot of this is it doesn't even really matter how good the art piece is right now. What matters is how you present it, which mm -hmm. I, I've learned a lot the past few years about how perception and pre presentation is everything in the art world. But it's becoming more and more true the older I get. Oh, that neckline is terrible. Well, I think because it's hard. I mean, there's so many things getting thrown at us now, too. People can't just look at one thing. There has to be a 15 second and then they can be on to the next thing already. Yeah. Which I think in perspective like that's not really what art is supposed to be i think it is something that you're supposed to be able to take in or look at the technique look at what it means to you all those kind of things that when you look at art you're supposed to have like when you go to a museum an art museum you don't just walk through the museum like at full speed looking mm -hmm. at each thing like you really take it in which i don't think you can get online really anymore but like i said there's got to be i think this might push so far that either something new is going to come out of it or there'll be enough pushback that things will change again would be my hope we'll see yeah i i'm not hopeful that way i feel like video content's here to stay and it is king but i feel like at least for artists we're going to adapt to it in some way that'll make it easier for the next generation of artists to get ahead but like right now whenever i talk to younger artists um specifically at cons i it's not very hopeful i remember i was at c2e2 in emerald city in december and a lot of the artists that I was talking to, they sounded just whatever. The, what's the opposite of hope? I guess hopeless, bleak, bleak. A lot of them sounded very bleak because uh, not only were they not getting ahead on social media, they didn't want to do the video stuff. But then they're so concerned with, you know, worldly matters like, will there be World War Three? Will climate change end the world before they hit 50 anyways? Uh, it's weird. It is, we're in a weird spot right now as a culture and society. Uh, I think of the quote from, actually we just watched the trailer last night, Across the Universe, where if any of you have seen it, it's like during the 60s revolution and Lucy, the main girl, is like doing all the protesting Activision stuff and the main boy, Jude, he paints and the whole argument, they have an argument about uh, what are you doing, Jude? All you're doing is drawing pretty pictures while the world's on fire or whatever it was. And it it's a weird feeling when you're like, I'm creating essentially entertainment value uh, in a time of uncertainty and a lot of other important issues going around. But I do believe that this is important on some level. I think it creates a way of escapism for a lot of people when they need it, when they need to refuel and kind of refresh. So that's my way of justifying it right now. <laughs> uh, and I think it's just good to see that. Uh, and I know you guys don't probably get to hear a lot of it from other artists, but I talk to a lot of artists on a weekly basis and um, a lot of very successful ones. And yeah. It, I, I will tell you right now, even very successful artists, artists that have close to a million followers or even more, there still is this pain of feeling the need to be relevant and to be seen and heard because they don't want like fall behind. And 
I think why it's comforting on some level is because then no matter where you're at in your career, you can know that you're not alone. It's a feeling that's felt by everyone in the community. Oh yeah. Anyways, rant over. <laughs> more followers, same problems? I'm trying to think of a phrase. More followers, more problems. Or same problems. Same problems, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Felix, let's see. Oh yeah, Felix says, also you don't even see every TikTok that people you follow make. Most people spend yeah. their time on their For You page and that only shows stuff that you already follow or he has a lot of traction already. Okay, excuse my own ignorance on this. I didn't realize that when I go to TikTok, it only shows the For You right away, not the following. Yeah. So I would, <laughs> I would keep going video to video and then like two minutes in, I'm like, wait, I'm not following these people. But it would take me a little bit. And then, yeah, you switch over. It will, like, randomly show someone you follow, but very yes. rarely. Yeah. Like, the first it's two so will be people you follow, or, like, the first one. Uh, so, yeah, that took me a little bit to figure out I wasn't actually on the right page. Actually, too, sometimes if you see something that's gone super viral on there, so you'll go on and see something that has, like, two million hearts on it. You sometimes will click that person's profile then. Every one of their other videos will only have like 50 or oh, even worse. Yeah, just like barely any. But there's that one video in the mix that has 2 million. It's so weird. Yeah. But. And that's so true to the times we live in right now is we judge people or I guess pages on the quantity of their likes and shares and comments rather than the content of the video we're actually watching. Well, I think that's why TikTok's bizarre because someone will get that and then the rest of their things are just low again. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like it for some reason found that would be a popular video, sent it out, and then, oh uh, yeah, I have no idea. In like some ways it's great because then even unknown artists can get like a viral video overnight it's like the lottery, though. Uh, it Yeah, it is like the lottery. And for some artists, they, they like the <laughs> the risk. Um, I don't know if I'm just more of a calculated person. I like to know, like, why my things are doing... Oh, am I off camera again? There we go. Oh, sorry, I'm not even paying attention to where it's at. Like, why I'm not doing well or figuring out, like, how can I make this better? So, yeah, when I post on TikTok, I, I literally feel like I'm rolling the dice every time. Like, well, maybe they'll do well. You never know. Some people like that gamble, though. I had this pulled up. I've been highlighting them as I go, and then it scrolled down to me. Oh, yeah. Ella says, I fear making videos. I feel like either my stuff would be cringe, behind trends, or just uninteresting. And I'm so out of the loop with TikTok. I don't even know how to get into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I guess even with my my low expertise on Reels and TikTok right now, I make all my videos outside of Instagram or TikTok. So I take videos just on my phone. Like maybe you've been seeing me pull out my phone from time to time to record. And I edit it in a program called Camtasia, and I edit it all together with the song in the background. Make sure that the song is actually a song you can use on Instagram or TikTok. So I always find that first. And Josh will find me sometimes upstairs just in our bed looking for songs that will fit the video that I do. Because I don't just want to have whatever popular song is trendy right now behind the video. Because uh, then I feel like it's there's no heart behind it. Uh, I try to make my reels have, I don't know, they feel like I put effort and thought into it, not just I really wanted to feel liked or followed. And it's weird because then you're you're combating it because you're like, well, if I do, like in this case, if I make if I use my own song, would am I hurting the video because I'm not giving it a better chance of being seen because I was stubborn and chose a song that I personally liked, but it might not do well as like a trendy video um, song. So yeah, it, it's a very frustrating time right now. And maybe that's something that is gonna be talked about more in 2022 for artists. Hmm. 
Hmm. Times are changing. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tolburn says being isolated and throwing your work into the abyss with diminishing returns is definitely disheartening. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. The abyss of Instagram. <laughs> When I'm at the point right now where even if I post, there's a good chance that I'll just lose followers from posting, which, yeah, I'm sure if a lot of you have felt that before, it's like, great. So now I feel even nervous to post anything because it has a chance of just negatively affecting me. It's weird. It's a weird time right now. Um, Elena says, my friend's Instagram account blew up on controversial uh, bearded drawer woman with little clothes art and I look at it like I should try to do reels and reaction getting art but as art is just my hobby I do it because I love it while I work full time as a teacher I can't start doing just what Instagram wants because I destroy my art I know controversial stuff has been known to bring in right yeah. that's kind of a thing where it's like anything that's controversial so even if people are hating on it for some reason Instagram will I think that's probably a lot of why there's so much hostility towards everyone too right now is that it knows what's controversial and it's going to start putting that stuff up there because people can get in arguments in the comments. It creates a whole mess of stuff. One, like we know someone that was gained a lot of traction and followers from posting very hot takes on controversial issues, specifically political ones. And yeah, their page comments were just, it was just a discourse. It was so bad. Uh, and that's also something I don't want. I don't want to just have a page full of people fighting in the comment section constantly. Well, that's kind of taking away <coughs> art being used as, I guess, an escape too. But I get there's a whole different perspective art, which is more the like political, kind of the cartoons and the newspapers, that kind of side of art. But you're definitely not wanting to be that at all. So No. Which I... Like. And, like, I still remember when politics, like, you didn't, like, you didn't have to be super involved with politics and people kind of accepted that. But nowadays, if you aren't 100% up to date with everything that's going on politically, then you're, like, this ignorant uh, freeloader. Uh, and I'm going to be honest with y'all. I, I genuinely have very low interest in politics. I, I really believe in... Um, like local communities and I know me and Josh have talked about doing more just in Waukesha where we live and giving back to the local community as a way to then um, I don't know better this small portion of the world that we can better and I think if more people would focus on their their community and rather than on the well, world as a whole it's or? like we should still be concerned about things that are happening in the globe for sure. But I do think uh, just posting things online and being like a social activist nowadays, it's a lot of like patting yourself on the back rather than actually things getting done. That's why I think actually having like physical things you can do in your community, whether that's giving back, helping at shelters or at food drives, whatever it may be. Uh, but I'm also old school in a lot of my... Uh, ways of acting for charity or making a difference so <laughs> I don't know I could also be totally off the mark on that but I guess that's how I've been feeling about it lately no I feel that I mean I feel growing up I kind of just learned the world can be your close-knit the world I don't know there's the broader world but sometimes if you live within your means of like the people around you the world really isn't that bad when you think about it. If you just keep it to your condensed world. But I get also you have to be aware of the things going on in the broader world. But I think it's good I for... I don't think be, I'm a frontline kind of person though either. That would, I just can't be that. It's good to be aware of what's going on in the world. And I'm, I'm definitely very much into like climate change. But not in a way that I'm like barking down people's throat about it. Uh, but more in a way of what can Josh and I do personally to make that change, whether it's with the business, so making sure all of the tape, the boxing, the packing materials that we do are not only as green as possible, but compostable. Um, but then even in our personal lives, like not buying plastic bottles for cleaning supplies or changing our garbage. 
bags. I know you didn't really like the green bags that much, but the compostable bags and like toothbrushes, like when you're more aware of how you're adding to the problem and trying to minimize that as much as possible, I think if we as like a collective society try to do that, I do think we would see uh, a lot of change. And especially if big companies uh, try to put their foot forward with a lot of these things too. But I'm also a pretty optimistic person, so I tend to lean on delusional, <laughs> I would say. Uh, but I really do believe in people as a whole. I love people. I think what we've been able to accomplish as a species is insane. I think phones are magic. I think this is cr- like that is honestly magic. crazy. Uh, and I try not to take things for granted. And I think it's really easy, especially nowadays when everything is so handed to us and everything is within arm's reach i mean we could literally order we could never go outside and be totally fine like you order all your food all your needs yeah uh, now they're starting to ship like anything from amazon obviously <laughs> uh, it's crazy and i think we need to acknowledge like how cool of a time we live in and to try not to just take it for granted uh anyways i feel like i'm definitely ranting in a different direction so yeah that's why Instagram's just crazy right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also true. Uh, Tolbert says, Tim's a kitty cat. It's got to be on his terms. Oh, this is your your love language. It's got to be on his terms. I'm an access service guy too. And yes, it doesn't always get read as a love language. My boyfriend super appreciates it though. Who, who said that? Tolbert. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I feel you on that 100%. And when I feel bad for Josh, because I think... He thinks like something is much worse than it is because I don't be like, hey, can I just have like an hour by myself? And I think you read that as I'm mad at you. Oh yeah, but it's not brain. at all. That's uh, just my basic anxiety where it's like, oh my god, what did <laughs> I do? <laughs> He's mad at me. But no, I think I've learned to. I mean, now we're going on almost four years, so I feel like I'm at a point now where I'm way more calm with it. Yeah, I would agree. But, For a while, I definitely would get really nervous. Like, oh my God, Tim hates me. (laughs) Uh, Ella says, you might not get the newcomers to the art community and that... I'm starting over. Hang on. Ella says, you might not get the newcomers to the art community that are easily distracted by colorful pieces, but great art will always be recognized and your sense of values and contrast is spectacular. Well, thank you, Ella. I very much agree with that, too. I mean, as long as I can just do this until I die, (laughs) I'll be a happy camper. (laughs) I think, okay, I'm going to try to keep this really short. I think why things like Instagram can frustrate me so much is because so much relies on social media working for us because I and me and Josh both don't have full-time jobs. This is our job. So I take it as like a personal I need to do something different. And when things aren't working, even when I'm trying new things, I I internalize it very harsh of I'm the problem. I'm not doing something and I need to figure it out. So I think that's why I tend to be harder on myself than uh, when things are going good. I think when things are going good with Instagram, I mean, you saw it. I'm like usually happy camper all around. I'll be just drawing, having a good time. And then when Instagram's not going very well for me, I do feel very guilty when I'm not drawing and I I do feel this lack of genuine excitement over drawing sometimes where I feel if I don't draw um, like something that will be received well on social media then why draw it at all and I hate that feeling so much Uh, and thankfully I'm, I'm old enough where I can combat it but definitely my mid 20s my mid to late 20s that's definitely a thought that would come across my mind a lot like i said thankfully i'm much older and much wiser and you know maintaining a level head but that yeah if you guys feel that i felt it too Tolbert says there will always be a packaging issue with the internet. Social media has it all formatted for you, but it's also r- restrictive. I still miss my MySpace. <laughs> oh. 
I never actually had a MySpace. I <gasps> what you didn't? I didn't care enough about social media when I was in high school because you gotta remember I got Facebook when I was like a junior or senior in high school. So for a lot of us, we only got Facebook as a way to like stay in touch after we graduated. But obviously, it took off and it became more than just that. Uh, but at the time, none of us were into it really. My Facebook was pretty, or MySpace was pretty cool. Well, and MySpace was more for the. Uh, who, how would Cat describe this? Or a lot of my friends that had MySpace in high school would say, uh, "Oh, well, thank you, oh, Alan, Alan Rowe, for subscribing." Uh, that because they didn't have a lot of friends at school, they could find friends online, and that's why they had MySpace. Um, that is absolutely not true, Tim. But I. I did have some people on my MySpace. I didn't know, but because my profile looked really cool. I mean, you were also homeschooled. I was homeschooled, and I had no friends, but I did have my MySpace friends. And I had my little profile with my music playing. I had my music set to autoplay, too, which was, like, kind of an a-hole move, but... I think that's what most people did. The autoplay music? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You wanted... Your, that song was, like, this is my moment to let them know who I am. <laughs> Um, let's see. Jen says, I do wish that there was more combination of media. Some of my friends enjoy art, but are very different in their own contributions. Like they have an art piece and want to voice dialogue to it. Um, one absolutely infuriating thing is that a lot of art sites don't make it easy to, to return to pieces or artists you like. I mean, Instagram too, sometimes you can like find something really cool forget to like it or something and you kind of lose it oh yeah i hate it when that happens there's a good chance that'll be gone forever i mean yeah then you start frantically trying to search close to what you thought it was mm -hmm. but yeah you can't find it um elena says josh i know what you mean by taking it in i just went to a bronze sculpture very postmodern art museum in this little place near where i live and it just felt amazing to experience art again. Art is, art is always important is how I view it. Actually, if anything, too, maybe that's what we should do again is go back to a museum and just walk around for a yeah. bit. Because I think that'll help you just, I don't know. It's nice to be able to go to a museum, I think, specifically, because you get to just really enjoy it and take it in. Because even conventions sometimes, too, are so frantic, you can't really just fully look and enjoy sometimes. So... Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, so maybe that'll be a good way to just really do that. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Art. Is I can't see that symbol from over here. I have seen that symbol before. Well, hello, thank you so much. Um, Luisa says, I know art seems to be less important when our world is upside down, but I think art and creativity is so important to escape and share one's passion. Yeah. I think that's why I continue to do it, even though I know that there's so much going on in the world. Uh, is Yeah, some days it feels tough. It feels like you're literally just doodling in a room while the world's on fire. But uh, I choose to believe that you got to have a good outlet and a good spirit and affect the people around you in a, like, a positive manner. And if you are able to do that, and hopefully it has like the... Uh, what's that? The spread it forward, or what's the? Oh my gosh, what's that term? Pay it. Pay it forward. forward. Yeah. Yeah. If you keep having that mentality, uh, then you would hope that more people would do it, and then people that have more power to actually make changes in the world would try to, or like, put more of an effort into trying. Hmm. All right. So I think what time is this? We got like another hour? Yeah. I'm going to really try to make this face look as finished as possible for you guys on the stream here. Actually, if any of you guys have good references of um, beautiful black women with kind of coiled hair or like accessories in like big thick hair that's kind of the feel i'm going for with little baby hairs then also matted against the head i want all of the the family members in the heart suite to have a much darker skin tone 
and then have their skin tone transition into their tail, which will be lighter in contrast, and then the heart that's behind it will be more white. So it's this white to uh, darker value transition. Uh, Fem says, I love video content, but more like a 3D modeling portfolio. You have a video showing your work, but not required. And then you also have the images with wireframes, etc., to soak up the art. Yeah. What about that one? The one thing we were just on today, ArtStation. Is that one any good or not really? I mean, ArtStation's pretty good. It's usually, People, I would say, use that more for getting jobs in the industry. Oh, more okay. like a professional uh, portfolio site. Or at least it was, I mean, back, this is like seven years ago when um, I was actually utilizing, I have an art station, but I like rarely use it. Oh. Uh, so, I mean, possibly, yeah. Maybe I should start posting in there again. I mean, DeviantArt, I know you have it, but is it really for uh, you at least? I, like I mean, I still post on DeviantArt every drawing I do. It, I like DeviantArt and I like what it was for me. I don't feel like younger artists utilize it as much anymore, which is kind of sad uh, because of all these other platforms kind of taking over. So, I, like I said, I actually don't know. DVR is nice because you can get a nice resolution, too, and you can see the full... Yeah. I don't know. I, just, I think the format's nice. I mean, obviously, it's kind of like a hodgepodge of things, so you could definitely find some crazy stuff on there, but I think you can do that with Instagram and Twitter, though, too, so... I just think it's a nice platform in terms of just being able to view something full size. You know, size. The, the joke with DeviantArt was you'd have to find diamonds amongst the garbage. <laughs> so there's a lot of, lots of quantity on DeviantArt. There's a lot of DeviantArt. A lot of DeviantArt <laughs> and a lot of, like, questionable things on DeviantArt. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can find gold. You can definitely find gold looking through DeviantArt. Um, Elena says, my friend absolutely hit the Instagram jackpot, and her page still keeps going well because she keeps posting the same type of thing, which Instagram pushes everywhere. Yep. Yeah, the algorithm kind of favors certain things over others, for sure. Um, you This Red Wrong says, oh, definitely, entertainment indirectly and directly helped us to not break down even those who can't afford technology so much, even going out with your dog can be refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think definitely art's a good... Yeah, it's a form of entertainment. It's something that you go to to either escape from the busyness of life or something you just because you enjoy. You know, even people that don't do art, there's enthusiasts. People just like to look at, I don't know, pretty things or things that are pleasing to the eye. Well, I mean... I, Not even just pretty things. I, I mean, was just like, yeah, You know what I mean, though? Like, pretty in terms of the tech, technicalities of it, I guess is what I mean, though. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's, like, the content's kind of, like, a gross subject matter, still you can appreciate the way it was created. Because I know when I'm looking through art and, like... Uh, I would say it's a little harder for me nowadays to be super blown away by a new piece or a new piece of art from someone, but... Uh, when it happens, I mean, it it usually is a very unique way of rendering or uh, the message that they're saying is very bold and kind of fun. And it, like, reminds me of why I like art so much in the first place because, like, it takes me out of reality for a second and I'm solely invested or I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm solely invested in this world that I've, I'm viewing right now and I like to navigate what stories I'm telling myself from looking at this piece and what it means and what it means to me and uh, those are the times that art is magical to me again and I love that um, Lena says with the controversial thing um, is that the artist hates the hate but also knows that they need to keep posting exactly the things that get hate because nothing else makes a scratch on Instagram we have a Ooh, friend like that, too. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to name names, but, yeah, I think they keep doing it, even though they claim they hate it, yeah. because I think they know it gets them attention. And I mean, I, I'm not even fault. Though. Yeah, I was yeah. Say, I can't even fault them, because I know what that's like, and I know what it's like feeling that you're losing the battle. And then I feel like there are moments of desperation, and then you kind of turn to what worked for you before. And, yeah, posting, you know, 
inflammatory things worked before, yeah, I could see why someone would do it again then. Felix says, I'm definitely the same with my boyfriend. I just, a lot of time, I like a lot of time on myself and know that it can easily be read as dismissive. But when I don't get enough alone time, I spiral and become ill-tempered. Yep. I'm right there. What was that, Felix? Yeah. I'm right there with you, Felix. Oh, yeah, when you're in your down-in-the-dumps kind of mood. I don't oh, like yeah. to be, especially pitied or, um, yeah, pitied, I... It. Oh, like, you don't like when I'm like, oh, Tim, no. it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be okay. I would no, say I that actually that. adds to the problem <laughs> and <laughs> helps it. I sometimes just want to fan those flames a little bit. <laughs> I feel like whenever you do that, I feel like it adds an hour of alone time that I, I don't need do then. that. Well, not much anymore. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to fight on stream. <laughs> Physically. <laughs> Josh is going to hit me if someone call the authorities. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Alex is here. We should do the Philly Art Museum in October. <gasps> Alex, how are you doing? For those who don't know, Alex Dos Diaz is one of my good friends. I would say him and I have bonded a lot over this last year and a half. So if you aren't following him already, he does really good uh, digital graphic art. And I like how much meaning he puts be behind his art. Kind of like what we were talking about, what type of art intrigues me nowadays. It's art that feels like it has a deeper thought and uh, the artist had an intention for it, which seems to be more rare nowadays because I feel like a lot of what artists create are what we'll do well on social media. So it's usually these very fast digestible, pretty images, usually like busts of girls with flowing hair. As I'm drawing a, a girl with flowing hair. Uh, <laughs> right? It's fine. Hypocrite. It's or, fine. What a hypocrite. Uh, so yeah, go check his stuff out. I think it's great. Alex is a sweetheart. And I feel like he also is one of those friends that challenges you on things, which is good. Oh, that... Well, I mean, this is a whole other subject that we can talk about, but the short of it is make sure that you surround your people yourself with people that aren't just yes men. Uh, and what that means is you want to have friends that will tell you what they really feel about a piece, especially if you trust their taste level. You want honest feedback. You want feedback that will be constructively critical to help you improve your own skill and eye that then when you go back to the drawing board, you'll have that improved sense of what is working and what's not in your piece. So I'm very grateful for the art friends that I have. And we try to help each other even through these weird times of social media, trying to adjust all together as a whole. And we'll always share tips that work and don't work. And I'll always try to do my best with you guys on what works and what doesn't. And like I said, I think right now, uh, video content should 100% be your focus if you're trying to play the social media game. And apparently going live is really big right now as well alongside reels obviously which you're gonna try right yeah so i guess if any of you are interested i might either do it tomorrow or friday i'll do like a short instagram live it'll be not really similar to this but i'll be in my work room uh i wanted to just try instagram live i've never done it before but i was gonna do like a section of a drawing that i i feel pretty comfortable doing live on like a 20 minute video and just try it out. And I'll definitely let you guys know how it worked, how the statistics on the back end, uh, what they revealed to me, and if I thought it was worth doing, if I would continue doing it again. But also, you can't just judge it just from one time. You have to do it a few times. All right. What? No, me just getting comments. Elena says, finish the bag in this illustration. Time to finish the pants. I don't really like drawing pieces with a whole lot of brown, but this piece needed it. What are they talking about? Elena's working on a project right now, too. Oh. Oh, yeah. 
I finished the bag and then is drawing pants snow. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Well, it's always good to have people doing work along with the stream, though. The best of luck with moving on to the next part. Also, if any of you have played Final Fantasy X, uh, I love I, all the summon designs, admittedly, but Ifrit and Shiva I especially loved, and I'm giving some of the locks that uh, Shiva had. Actually, I can show a picture. <laughs> so Shiva had these big sections of hair that were... Uh, separated and then coiled with these bands let me pull this off as you see here so i feel like i'm trying to give homage to my love of that look by kind of sectioning off the hair in these big kind of chunks but then wrapping them with some form of a string or even kelp or seaweed i'm still trying to figure out the materials but i like the look that it's giving me right now and i want to continue on with that and I'm trying to figure out how much jewelry I want these mermaids and mermen to have in this deck. Because with my club, actually I don't even think I have it down here, but with the club card, I definitely went more minimal and he barely had any accessories on him. But I feel like with her, I might be adding a little bit more. And it kind of gives, I have to be careful because it definitely gives more of this regal uh, kingdom feel, which I guess kind of fits, but also I need to make sure it makes sense with them swimming underwater constantly. Like you don't want just a bunch of jewelers and accessories everywhere because then when they're swimming and them living day to day, it would just be floating and all over the place. So it'd have to be like really tight to the body jewelry. And uh, I think that's what I'm gonna try doing here. Uh, Jen says, have you taken a look at Shiva's face? I don't think I have. Wait. Jens, do you have like a picture you could link? Actually, yeah. If you guys have any good one. references, or even if you think you have an idea or like a Pinterest image that you have saved that you think would work great for me to use as inspiration, please post it on the stream follow along below. Uh, I think people are surprised that I actually do listen to the community when they share things and I'll integrate it into what I'm drawing. Because sometimes if someone has a really great eye for like, oh, that reminds me of this, you should check it out. Uh, I will check it out. <laughs> Wait, is that it? I know. That's her back, but... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, I remember I remember the temple where she's lying down and the hair is spread out like a star, but I don't think I actually know what she looks like in human form. So, yeah, if you have a picture of that, I've never seen that. Also, with darker skin tones, uh, if you've been kind of noticing, I like to layer it. I don't try to just go to like a 2B pencil right out the gate. I'll use my 2H pencil and try to give it that distinct darker value slowly and build up my layer so it has this consistent feel to it. And then when I do go with a darker pencil, I won't have to go as harsh. Like I did my, my Queen of Clubs. Uh, for my previous card deck and as you can see with her even though there are some lighter tones in here because of the way that I built up the darker tones you can it still reads very much a darker skin palette altogether and especially against the darker hair tones uh, I had to be careful and that's why the accessories I made really light and bright to add that contrast to make then even a mid-tone feel a little darker and I'll probably do the same with her I'll probably make a lot of the jewelries and some of the accessories of much lighter value. And then her skin should then pop out uh, because of the contrast. Oh, John says her faith statue because it is never shown in game. Oh, okay. that's why I never saw it. Okay. Hmm. Then no, I don't think I have. Yeah, if you could post that, that'd be great. Yeah, you can, um, on the Discord, Jens, under stream follow along, if you want, you can just post the, a picture of it there if you have one. 
Yeah, because I'm trying to find it right now. But I'm not seeming to find it. Um, Elena says, I've fallen in love with non-human skin tones and painting this Caucasian woman feels so weird. <laughs> yeah, right. Like if you're so used to blue or purple and you switch back to skin tone of... Uh, especially if they're like a fair skin Caucasian person. Yeah, it can be a little weird. Surprised no cats have showed up today. Astrid's so mad at me right now. I didn't say Astrid hates you right I now. I know Astrid does hate me right now. It's fine. I'm trying my best. I have to be careful. If you guys can kind of see it on stream, see that weird black or like darker value? I try to pick it up with the deeded eraser because sometimes that could be like the oil from my skin uh, has seeped into the paper and creates like this slightly darker blotch. Ooh. Yeah, so you, you do have to be a little careful. I, I Before the stream started, I washed my hands. And honestly, I probably should wash them again soon because uh, you don't want too much of your skin oil to get absorbed into the paper because that you can't erase. And I've learned that with uh, darker values, it can really appear as like a smudge or like a stain on your paper. Uh, Lena says, I play D&D, &D, so I've drawn blue, green, and red skin creatures recently. So it's very weird to do a fair skin Caucasian character. Mm -hmm. I like blue skin. I think probably because I think of Avatar when I think about blue skin, though. <laughs> oh, I think of the dark, or the elves from World of Warcraft. Or Smurfs, The night too. elves. No, I do not think you of the think Smurfs. You don't think of Smurfs? No. Oh, wait, did we watch, did I watch the new, the one Smurf movie with you? No, I haven't Those seen remake? any of them. Oh, okay. They're so funny. I mean, I don't really have a desire to see them. <laughs> They're really good movies, Tim. <laughs> well, literally. Oscar award-winning movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oscar award-nominated Smurfs. <laughs> Smurfs. <laughs> we could talk about movies, though. Yeah. If you want to go there. I mean... Yes. Uh, you said on your story that you were planning on it, so I was just bringing it up. Uh, if you want to talk about... So I went to go see... Or we went to go see Belle last night. Uh, I love the director. I thought Summer Wars is like a perfect uh, movie for what it is. I did not care for Belle very much at all. Uh, it was weird because I liked the director. And he. I, I like the Digimon movie that he directed as well, but I did not really care for that one that much. Um... And then the other movie. Oh, we saw Encanto. Got, it was so good. Uh, it was good. I wouldn't say I like so it. good, but it was good. Uh, the the We Don't Talk About Bruno song is still stuck in my head. <laughs> Love that. We don't talk about And then we watched the stop motion animated movie House or The House on Netflix. The one that's like three short stories. Uh, that was. I thought that was pretty good too. It's cute. It was good. That and Encanto I thought was good. And then Nightmare Alley. There were a lot of elements I liked, but overall I would say I thought it could have been so much better with like small changes. And I think that was my biggest gripe with that one. All right, got the movie discussion out of the way. Right. Like I, <laughs> Tim, I you were like get absorbed in movie talk yeah, about. Yeah, okay. Because okay. I think I've seen a lot that I don't really care for recently that I'm like, I just, I don't want to get pulled back down into. Movie territory. Yeah. Ella says I'm currently drawing a blue dragon, borns, drawing a blue dragon born. So yeah, it's been a fun ride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, what are you all working on right now? Who's here right now that's drawing? I feel like I got her face kind of where I want it. Oh, okay. So this is, yeah, this is the statue. So it's like the faith. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you have seen that one before? Yes. Okay. Because when you enter the temple, you stand on it. Gosh, that's like kind of terrifying. <laughs> well, I mean, they're dead. Well, that makes it even more terrifying. <laughs> We're getting some images for you, Tim, for reference, too. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, because I'll probably work on her a little bit more after the stream and then do like a in progress post for uh, Instagram tonight. Hmm, try and think for. Oh, Jen says, I just found something out. You can actually get to the faith if you have, if you can beat Dark Shiva, which most don't. Yeah, I never fought any of the Dark Aeons. I might with this playthrough. I'm almost at the end. I'm waiting for our other friend, Kat, to uh, um, come over us because she really wants to watch the ending as well. And can Josh you, has never seen it. Can you summon the Dark Ones then too? Or no? I don't think so. Okay. Maybe. I mean, I've never gotten them, so I don't know. I don't think so, though. Jen says summoners are basically ne necromancers in Final Fantasy X because I mean, they yeah. are dead spirits. Yeah, I love the story because Tim, watching Tim play right now has been my first time really seeing it played through all the way. So it's been fun. I don't know. You explain the story really well, too, as you go. I just I think it's perfect. <laughs> I love Final Fantasy X so much. Lena says Encanto was good for me too. Not my favorite Disney movie or near the top, but it was solid. Yeah, that's exactly how I describe it too. And I like I had fun watching it. Yeah. Alex, I wanted to watch Belle. How was it? I think I personally I'll leave, I don't have to answer it anymore. <laughs> I think I personally give it five out of ten. I don't even know if that is enough for me. Cause I kinda wanted to leave the theater personally. I just didn't really I don't know. I wasn't vibing with it. <laughs> I guess the things like, I, I won't spoil anything about Belle. I'll just say that there were a lot of anime tropes, like the whole movie. And it got to the point where things were seemingly nonsensical with, like, logically thinking about how characters would act or what they would do or what actions they would take or how they got to places or how they figured things out. The movie just kind of forced it, and you were you were forced to accept it then as a viewer watching it. And there were just times where I think the one for me, this is not spoiling, but she has to go somewhere and she has to figure out where it is. And it's eight hours away. And all they know is that it's somewhere in this giant neighborhood next to Tokyo. And she finds the exact person that she needs to in this giant city. One more thing too. It's not spoilery. But you know when like the whole it, it was a meme I think too, but in CSI oh. or whatever where enhance. they enhance yeah enhance enhance where they're like pulling up an image of something and they keep enhancing and it like renders it perfectly like that's it, exactly that yeah. actually happened they did that movie. in this movie they're like wait I recognize those buildings in the video live feed zoom in on it and they literally like zoom in on the two buildings yeah. and then they make it bigger and then it pixelizes into like high definition. high resolution yeah. And it was... That was a little crazy. It was like Tiny Chat. Remember Tiny Chat where you do like live video chat with random people? It was kind of like a Tiny Chat screenshot that they were building a hand. It was so... They literally even said zoom... They, I don't know if they said They said hands, zoom in, I think. But they're like, zoom in on that. Yeah. All right. I won't <laughs> put you there again, though. Yeah. I think that kind of got you down yesterday, too. Just because I like the director so much. And then seeing this movie, I was like, ah, I didn't really care for that. I feel like I'm more lenient on movies than you are too. Or I try to be a little bit nicer yeah. when I view them. And that one too, I was just... At least we got popcorn. Uh, we did get popcorn. Uh, Jen says you can't summon the Dark Ions. They are super bosses. Oh okay, yeah, That's so what I thought. Yeah. Could you imagine though if you could have... You could have basically have normal Shiva and then you could also summon the Dark Shiva. I mean... You could just literally play with the summons every fight then. Yeah, too much. That'd be fun. Um, Tilburn says I thought y'all were talking about the Disney short Bow. We watched it while making bows. It was helpful. Oh, that was oh, that cute one. The, eight, um, the dumplings. The dumpling, yeah. Mm -hmm. That yeah, was, was cute. cute. What was the name of the other Disney short we watched with the cute older couple that were dancing? Oh my gosh. What was the name of that one? I love old people. Um, what was the name of it? I think it's a Pixar short. Was it Pixar? I think it's Pixar. Us again. Us again. Yeah. There it is. 
There's one Disney short. It's called Us Again. It's really cute. I think Tim said it's Pixar. I think. Oh, no, it's... No, it's not. It's Disney Animation Studios? Studio... Just see if Walt Disney Studio Motion the, Pictures. The distribute, well, you have to click it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Walt Disney Animation Studios. Wow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was great. It's called Us Again. It was cute. It's a short one. It's like five minutes. Jen says, I am tracing an old pencil sketch in CSP so I can play around with it. What's, wait, CSP, CSP? Creative Suite. I feel like I should know what that is. Uh, Clip Studio Paint? Oh, duh. Yeah, that's <laughs> the other one that's super popular right now. Um Sorry, whenever I hear CS, I immediately think Creative Suite from Adobe. Uh, yeah, Clip Studio. What's funny is I haven't even tried it out yet, but I hear so many people talking about it right now. Mariella Josefina Pera Flores, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for subscribing. I'm going to give her earrings. Uh, Lena says, I am the opposite of tech savvy, so if I can spot that the tech is bad in a show or movie, it's bad. <laughs> or rather, yeah. too good. Um, I love the Piper Pixar short film so much. Is that the one with the birds? I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, that one is cute. Yeah, that one's Little cute. birdies are cute. Wow, on camera, it looks way harsher than in person. Oh, does it right now? That's okay. All right, I think, what do I have? Probably a half hour? Yeah, I'm going to go with my HB pencil now and start shading her skin a little darker. Actually, I need to check, too, to see if the groceries came. Uh, you I can just go really quick. outside. I can check on mine here quick to see. Hmm. Nope, not yet. We're good. So you can see how it'll be a slight difference. But if I can be consistent enough, it should create this nice even tone throughout her skin. Lincoln says, Tim, do you have any reference points on the face to position the second eye correctly? Yeah. Uh, that's always the toughest thing, isn't it? Uh, one, I would always just take a picture of yourself. And uh, remember that your eyeballs are literally orbs pushed into the socket of your skull. So I always try to imagine that the eyeballs are like these orbs that sit within the skull. So I think too often eyes can look flat because the eyelids don't look like they're surrounding an orbular, I don't even know if that's a word, but an, an orb object. So the skin flaps, you want to make sure they're consistently going around an orb. Because I think all too often I see it's the eyelids that will make eyes look flat more so than the actual eye itself. So be very conscious of how you're placing the eyelids and make it consistent with the direction that they're looking and that they make sense because when you look to the side the angle is way different for an eyelid than when you're looking straight forward so that'd be my my biggest tip there uh Silburn says yeah the shading doesn't look as soft as usual probably just the camera contrast making it too sharp yeah the camera contrast is insanely sharp I think we, you can change it on there. Try this little setting game. Oh, wait. 
I guess I'm a little farther away. No, I don't want it that far. It helps a little bit too. Yeah, something else I guess we'll figure out for future streams. Because I don't know why it looks that sharp. Yeah, that's... It's like picking up every little bit. <laughs> Where it's funny is in person, it definitely does not look that sharp at all. No, it's definitely smoother. I don't know what it... Yeah, it's probably just the contrast on there. I know if you click the setting, see the gear to the left to me. Oh, Not that. The gear to the left right there. Oh, I can flip it live? Oh. That's kind of fun to make sure that my proportions are right. I think you can maybe do that. No. Okay. We'll figure it out before next stream. Okay. I want to figure it out live. Tim says, ponder the orb. <laughs> Lincoln, Tim does ponder his orb. <laughs> you gotta ponder the orb. Um, Slowburn Studio says the thing I love about Encanto is how many adults love it, like beyond the level of their kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's fun. It's it literally does sweep you into it, and it kind of holds you the whole time. I like the music too. I thought. Besides, I think there's one song that was kind of cringy. Otherwise, it was the Muscle Girl. What? Oh, I, I actually like that oh, song. Oh, really? I thought I didn't like that song as much. Oh, I like that song. I thought the first one was a, a little hard to understand because she's talking like a mile a minute. Uh, so I, I didn't really well, I get what that. was going on. I felt it was like doing a poor job at explaining everything um, really quickly at you. Hmm. Elena says, oh, about Piper. It's the one with the bird. I taught it for a media class once and called the bird a seagull when it's obviously a sandpiper. <laughs> <laughs> it looks kind of like a baby Actually, seagull. I only know that because I had to draw a sandpiper for the beer company I work for um, from time to time. Oh, that's right. They're so cute. Mm -hmm. I love They're when birds cute. get the little fluffy faces, too. I mean, they don't look that animated in well, real life. <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> that would be terrifying. <laughs> It's cute. So as you see something animated, you're like, it's really cute. But if that was in real life, it'd be kind of terrifying to see. Mm -hmm. No, but I love a little chickadees. We have a lot of chickadees here. I think their faces are so cute because they get that little bit of fluff on their face too. And you could tell in wintertime too. I don't know if it's because they're trying to stay warm, but their fur gets really fluffy on their face. So they look like they have this little puff face. It's really cute. I mean, probably. Uh, Soulburn says, I love the Muscle Girl one. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't like it as much. Yeah, I like the that Muscle Girl That was probably, one. that was my, I'm trying to remember the one song. The one girl um, that, the rain, she has like the clouds above her head. I liked her song. She didn't have a song. <laughs> what she, song? She only did, she talked in Let Don't Talk About Bruno. Well, she had Bruno. What was the other song she was in then? Was Bruno the only one? Well, I guess all the family the members are in the, the first. I mean, the Bruno song is great. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no. <laughs> I literally find myself singing that constantly, um, especially to the cat Casper, the cat, the black one. I am constantly singing that to him. I'm like, I'll walk up to him and be like, "We don't talk about Bruno, no, no." Um, so Burton says, I watch a lot of series, so now movies seem super short. <laughs> Shouldn't there be seven more one-hour segments to resolve this? <laughs> yeah, right. There are some movies you've seen that we feel could have been better as a series. But then there's some I mean, series we've Nightmare watched Alley. that we've been like, this could have been better for a movie. Yeah, the Nightmare Vow. Alley probably would have been... Wait, what did you say? The Vow could have definitely been just a documentary. The Vow could have been a movie. That was way too long. Sometimes some series do stretch and you're like, yeah, this, the plot wasn't big enough to fill in all this time. And then the entire episode, you're like, this was filler. Yeah. This entire episode was meant for filler. Uh, 
And then it says, I just didn't know much about sandpipers or the name of them in English. So I just immediately thought seagull and found out an hour after the class that it's a sandpiper. Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, they kind of look like baby seagulls. So I could see maybe... If I was in the class, I could have seen where you're coming from. <laughs> uh, Femme says, I watched Hamilton. I feel like I was more equipped to understand what was going on in the first Encanto song. Oh, oh. Good, yeah, because Hamilton talks super fast. Um, I have my one friend, Elaine. She can sing rap that whole... I haven't even seen Hamilton, but she we were at a con and she was like going and it was a mile a minute. Actually, I've not seen Hamilton either, but it's just a quick, quick singing. It's very quick singing. Oh, hi, Amy. Amy's here. Oh, hey, Amy. I How love Encanto and we watch it every night. Yeah. It's one of those like feel good movies. The colors are fun. The stories. I like the, message. the music's really good. Yeah, I thought the message was actually on point too. I won't. I won't spoil it because that would definitely be a spoiler. I think that was too with Bell. The message was just very misconstrued. You didn't really. I don't know. Not going back on Bell, but I think in Kanto, the message was there. It was clear, and I thought it was done really well too. Um, Jen says of all birds, the great, the greatest gives me. Hang on. Jen says, of all the birds, the gray tit gives me greatest whiplash because it looks so cute and then it goes and kills a mouse in its own size. I feel like that was a typo. I don't know what bird that is. No, there's. The, I think there is a bird called the gray tit. The gray tit? Mm hmm. Because I know there is a bird that. There's another bird Wait that has tit second. in the name. Yes, type in tit bird. <laughs> Oh my god, it's called a great tit. See? Oh. Oh my god, it has the face, it has the head of a chickadee and then the body of a killer. <laughs> a killer. <laughs> oh, they're cute though. Very strange color patterns though. The great tit. So no, you know. Bruno. <laughs> yeah, I was not expecting that name, Ella. <laughs> Titmouse. What are these birds? <laughs> oh, is that the one I'm thinking of? There's one that's... Yeah, just the tit. It's called tit. Yeah. Wait, is that this how the sling for that came about? Was because the bird was named... What came first? <laughs> that I don't know. Oh, it's, it's cute, though. It's very pointy. And Titmouse is also an animation studio. Oh. I guess when you like the name so much... <laughs> Um, Elena says, fun fact, that class was my last critique to graduate as a teacher on my last day of placement. So I actually never taught the class again after that, so they might never know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> They're forever going to know them as seagulls. <laughs> uh, Femme says, yeah, Lynn manuel Miranda loves his rap. Uh, would definitely recommend watching Hamilton as well, by the way. I do have to say that I sing rap that whole musical on my own as well, though. And do you hard. really? I'm always surprised when people can do it, because when Elaine does it, it is, it's quick. It's very I mean, quick. I feel like I stumble over my words too much, and I couldn't do it. I always hate it. Did you, were you good at speeches for school? Mm-hmm. Really? I... My issue is my brain will start thinking ahead of the word I'm currently saying out loud. And then I start. Oh, yeah. That's where I, I trip. And then it, yeah. 
So I tried to talk really slow, so that way then I could keep my brain on pace with where I was actually talking, but it's hard. <laughs> We're coming down to about like 10 minutes left, so definitely if you have questions too for Tim about anything, let us know. Except for Belle. Except for Belle. <laughs> Just don't ask about movies. Don't ask about tech <laughs> problems. Um, well, I think I'm okay talking about movies that I genuinely enjoy. I just yeah, feel like, like there's Encanto. been a lot. Encanto was good. Actually, I thought the house. I thought the house was really cute. That was one. The house was cute. I thought it was just good. I mean, any movie that's unique and quirky, I think I'll find some level of appreciation because as long as it's something I haven't seen before, I think there is a part of me that gravitates toward it. Tobrun says, most of us still don't know all the words to Prince Ali. It just makes rewatches more rewarding. Prince Ali. He. Ali Ababwa. I think I only know that part. Man, if I had to like be on a TV show to name the lyrics. I know the melody. Oh my God. You're going to get on a game show for the first time in your life in the first question. Yeah. <laughs> Sing all the words to Prince Ali. But it is he. Uh, I can't think of it. Anyways. Uh, Fem says, after listening for the hundredth time, I can do a pretty decent job for most of them. Some I still struggle with as well, as I also don't have the lung capacity to last the <laughs> whole sentences. Right? It's a lot. It's like really quick short breaths. But... Oh, actually, people are sending some really good photos to me. I'll show you some. Oh, yes. Yeah, and Fem sent some in as well. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah, because once the stream ends, I'll probably eat really quick and then just sit and draw this for a little bit. So I'll look at the reference you guys are sending. Uh, Jen says, do you have any recommendation for movies with tragedy plots? Whoo! Well, what type of tragedy are we talking? Are we talking about like death of a loved one? Uh, man, okay, one that comes in my mind. Well, I don't know if this is a great movie, but I like it for personal reasons. And I'm going to show Josh it sometime soon. Maybe even today we could watch it. It's called The Wrestler. It's by Darren Aronofsky. But the reason I, I like it is because it talks about a wrestler. Oh my, I mean funny that now I'm talking about this because I'm looking at this whole conversation we've had on this live stream. No, don't look it up. It might spoil oh, it. It might spoil okay. it. I was trying to see if don't, I feel like I've seen this movie. Up. Okay. Just, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> but it talks about like a pro wrestler who was really big in the 80s, 90s, and now he's trying to navigate being who he is in like 2010, 2012, when wrestling's not as big as it once was, and he's tr still trying to live his glory days and still be relevant but then being forced to like work normal jobs uh and i i see it as a tragedy so if you watch it yeah that one i i like but then there's other movies that i think are tragic for like uh i really want to watch the father and it's about dementia i already know a lot about oh it God. even though i haven't seen it the climax but movie it, director right no 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 this one is about, it's Anthony Hopkins. Oh, it's got, um, what's the actress's name? Olivia Coleman. Olivia Coleman, yeah. Okay. And it's about him slowly losing his grip on reality and, like, forgetting things constantly. And it's, it's supposed to be really sad because the daughter is trying to take care of him and try to help him navigate slowly losing his mind toward death. It's, that's definitely tragic. I mean, yeah, that's because that's real life kind of tragic. And then I mean, there Jen was says unhappy endings specifically. I'm trying to think of something that you've shown me. I mean, I love unhappy endings. Um, I'm thinking of ending things. I thought, maybe. Would you classify? Yeah, I would think so. Uh... Tim, I mean, for unhappy endings, right? Yeah, but in a way, I would say he found peace. So I don't know. I mean, a lot of people think my favorite movie ever, Synecdoche, New York, is tragic. That one's hard, yeah. So just, 
it's a good movie, but it's hard to watch. I would say it, it deals a lot with uh, <laughs> life and being forced to come to the terms that we're going to be dying and not ever fulfilling what you wanted to do in life. And I mean, there's so much more than even that. I think that one's great, but man, I feel like there's so many I could recommend. Some people would say Mother Exclamation Point has tragic ending. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, man, we're really in the Aronofsky camp here, but uh, Requiem for a Dream, super tragic. None of the characters have happy endings. That's one of those movies I can probably only watch once. Yeah, that one's, that yeah, one's a tough it's watch. It's almost one of those movies I just I can't do it again. It's exhausting. I, I rarely feel physically ill when watching a movie. That movie made me feel physically ill. Oh, God, the one scene where... It's shaking. Uh, Helena. No, his face. Do you remember the scene where his face? Where his face? Um. Oh, my God. No, never mind. I'm thinking about Fight Club right now. I don't know why I'm thinking about that scene in Fight Club. Oh. No, Fight Club's not a tragic ending. No, never mind. But, yeah, Requiem for a Dream is bad. Good. Bad. So, yeah, those would be my other recommendations also on my head. And we were, I mean, we talked about this movie, I think, too much for Josh's liking. But if you ever want to watch what I consider, like, true modern horror, watch Climax. The second half of that movie is Mm. unrelenting, and it's uncomfortable, and you are along for the ride, and you feel like you're there, and it is hard to get through. That was so hard to watch. Slowburn says, Requiem is one of my favorite movies ever, and I've only watched it, like, twice. Yeah, that's one of those movies. I don't, I watched it once, and mm-hmm. it was good. I got a, I got what I got from it. I really enjoyed it. It was an experience, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I agree. Them says, oh, with the rap. After listening for the hundredth time, I can do a pretty decent job for most of them. Some I still struggle with as well. As I, oh no, I already read this. I'm sorry. The long capacity. <laughs> um, Jen says, nope, I read that. Uh, Slowburn says, I can name a song. Lyrics, no way. Yeah, I'm the same way. Sometimes I even struggle with song names, though. Or I'll know, like, a snippet of the song, but, yeah, I'm not really good at remembering. Well, Josh grilled me one time because uh, I don't really listen to the lyrics of music half the time. <laughs> and there will be songs I listen to, and Josh would be like, why are you listening to that song? Like, is there something Like, is there something we need to talk about? And I don't even realize how melancholic the lyrics are. I mean, even some of my favorite songs, like, uh, like what's the pop song? Uh, it Ain't Me by Selena Gomez. I don't know the words, but oh, yeah, you try singing I the words. Did you not? I have listened to that song more than five hundred times, easily. We kind of went over it. It's, ba, 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 no, Valerie. I I don't know the words. Uh, I don't even know if she's singing words at that part, though. Honestly, I think she is. Oh, she really? Mm-hmm. I thought it was just like snippets, you know. But I definitely like when uh, words become kind of an instrument themselves. I think that's why my favorite band is Sega Rose because even though they're Icelandic. They do sometimes sing uh, in Icelandic, but then there's another thing that they sing in called Hopelandic, or that's what's been nicknamed, where it's not real words. He's just singing in like tones and uh, variables in uh, words that sound pleasing and that kind of add to the, the sound, but they don't actually mean anything. Like there's no actual word being sung, mm-hmm. which I like. Definitely some recommendations, too, for that don't have endings people sent in. Um, I watched I watched Once Were Warriors for Tamira Morrison. Um, I don't know if I know that one. Elena says, Tragedy, Unhappy Ending, Million Dollar Baby. Ah! <laughs> uh, Ren says, The movie I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore is sad. Uh, I know about that one. I haven't seen it. Oh, Ella says Grave of the Fireflies broke me. I oh. cried during the whole movie. Actually, that's, that's another, a tragic movie. That's another watch once one. Um, Actually, good. That one, yeah. Yeah. There's very <laughs> little happy about that movie. I agree with Tober. Never need to watch Grave of the Fireflies again. Yeah. Uh, Elena says I'm a full weirdo. I rarely watch full movies again, but I often go back to watch certain scenes. Oh. 
I do that if it's like really good music in a scene. Sometimes I like. I mean, admittedly, at least once a month I'll watch the climax dance oh scene number. That, I think it's so good. I have a love hate relationship with that movie. Do, 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 and Tim do, 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 Tim loves do, 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 loves the movie, do, 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 which do, 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 I do too. I liked do, 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 I liked the movie, but it was one of those one watches for me where thinking about the movie literally is making me tired right now. <laughs> it was just emotionally exhausting. It is emotionally I exhausting. Wanted, just be, I felt in that place too. I think that's why the movie was so good. Because I felt like I was there and I wanted out of it. You felt like you were in a bad party with a bunch of people. And actually, I, I don't even want to spoil it of what happens. But then you're basically in this nightmare realm out of nowhere. And you yourself aren't in control of your own psyche. Uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Don't watch the trailer, though, because uh, I think it kind of gives away some of the scary parts. I would actually go into Climax with nothing, knowing nothing, and just know that it's a bunch of dancers in an, an auditorium, and, like, that's it. Oh, Alex says the preview for Climax was enough for me. <gasps> Alex, actually, when you're here next month, I would love to watch it with you and hear what you think about it. I'm going to be upstairs. Yeah, jo- Josh not. doesn't I, have to be around. I told him I'm never watching that movie again. I don't even want to hear... The sounds that they have in that movie are so terrifying. I hate it. <laughs> Which is fair. I think that's actually a fair response to it because it is It's it, incredibly heavy well you take that as i think i don't think it's bad i thought it was really good it did what it did well i just hope oh. <laughs> um felix says not every movie is super rewatchable there are certain you can get enough never get too much of though for me it's howl's moving castle and harry potter one through three yeah howl's moving castle's such a fun one i mean totoro for me too i can watch if i just picked up and watch it, i could just didn't watch that one i do um, think like my most replayable movie for me actually isn't even in my top five, but it's called A Single Man, directed by Tom Ford, uh, who's actually a fashion designer by trade. Saved Gucci, but then became a director. Uh, I think the reason I like it so much is there's no really like heavy conflict, but it kind of follows... Um, well, I, actually, I don't even want to spoil it's the a good, story, a good but movie. I think it's excellent. Uh, and I can watch that literally anytime. And then also, there's a movie called Transamerica. I just <laughs> I like it a lot. And... Uh, it's like quirky funny and it's like unusual bonding between two characters who probably would never bond in real life if the circumstance wasn't right. I don't know. I, I really like that one. I can rewatch that anytime too. All right. I know we're coming close to the time. So if you have any last minute questions, ask them right now and we'll kind of try to do spit run of any that Josh missed. <laughs> What? Fem. Fem retracted a comment, but I was like, oh, I like the message. I couldn't read it in time, though. Um, Elena says, the one movie that has me cry beginning to end is Logan, but you need to watch all the X-Men movies to really get it. I haven't I seen he- Logan. I hear a lot of good things about Logan. Admittedly, I, I haven't seen superhero movies in a few years now at this point. Uh so yeah, I, I haven't seen it. I heard good things though. Uh, Fem says I love to rewatch Lord of the Rings. I agree. Actually, I even the other day when I was gaming, I just had it on my other monitor, mm-hmm. playing in the background. It's like a comfort, I think. Sometimes there's movies that are comfortable just to have on. Yeah. While you're doing something else, sometimes. Elena says, I don't know if you giggle that million dollar baby because you've seen it or based on the title. Generally is tragic and not what it sounds like. I'm probably thinking about a different movie when I heard it then. Have you seen Million Dollar Baby? Oh yeah. Oh, you have? Mm-hmm. You haven't seen it? No, I don't think I've seen that one. Wait. Oh, you know what? I was thinking about that animated movie with the baby. Boss Baby, I think. <laughs> I thought about Boss Baby at first. What? Right? Is it Boss what? Baby? How did you think of Boss Baby hearing I don't know. I don't know because in my head I connected million dollars to Boss and then Baby. (laughs) So (laughs) I thought about Boss Baby. It's fine. (laughs) Tim's rewatchable movie vibe, depressed LGBT. Oh, single man, yeah. I love it. That was a good movie, though. I liked that one. 
And well, Nicholas I think Holt I, I like a lot too as an actor. Oh, uh, he's so cute. Um, but I feel like the main character a lot, like I resonated with him a lot. And I think it's rare for me to see like a gay person on screen that I can relate to because I feel like nowadays they're all like Jonathan from Queer Eye where I'm borderline embarrassed. <laughs> and uh, to see like a very well together, slow talking, very serious gay person depicted on screen. I don't know. It was it was really comforting in a lot of ways. So I, I like that a lot. Yeah, Femme, you're so cute. So basically, what this is the comment that Femme left that for some reason retracted. I don't need lyrics to sing along and make it up or hear it wrong and roll with it. I love to sing so much. Might not mm -hmm. be able to name artists or titles, though. I love that. <laughs> you just make it up as you go. That is cute. Uh, Slow Burn says, can we get a zoom out of this just a little oh, bit? Oh, yeah. See where you're at. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'll probably have her finish. Ooh, I try not to give any, like, for certain. So I'll say hopefully by this weekend. Uh, and I'll, I'll definitely post her when I'm officially finished. But I'm still slightly figuring out how much jewelry and, like, pearls I want to include in the actual... Uh, tail fin and how kind of lush I want it to feel versus um, luxurious because I think even adding some of this arm stuff it's looking a little mm, I don't know I gotta play with it I'm not fully feeling it right now so I might take out some of this arm jangle any more last minuteers um no, we are good. All right. Well, um, then I'm going to cut the stream off here. Thank you all. Also, may feel free to share what you worked on during stream and the stream follow along. I see Ella oh, yeah. and Rani and Manulin, who, oh my gosh, I know what you. Is that Elena? I'm pretty sure that's Elena. But yeah, thank you guys so much for sharing stuff on Discord as well. Yeah, thank you guys. I'll definitely, literally, I'll give it a look right as I go upstairs. Um, but thanks so much for coming to this live stream. I'm sorry it ended with chipmunk or started with chipmunks, <laughs> uh, and then eventually we converted back to humans. And uh, this was actually pretty fun to work on once I got my bearings. Still hate this hand. <laughs> I'm gonna take that out. Uh, I'm gonna probably take a different reference picture. I think the one I had, the muscles were too strained. So then putting it on this young mermaid's uh, arm, it just looked. I just didn't like how it looked. So I'm gonna redo that. But thank you guys so much for coming. I think, yeah, you're right. It's pretty good to get out frustrations out in the open and talk about them with people. And it's been really nice. And thank you guys for joining me once again. And we'll be back next Wednesday. I'll be doing a different uh, mermaid in this mer deck that we're creating together. And I think that's all the big news that we got. But if you want to stay followed along, I have my Patreon link below. I post almost every day on the tarot deck, the mermaid deck, and Aquatica Nautica, my big five foot drawing. And I will continue to do that over this next work week. Okay, I think that's all I got. Josh, any last minuteers? Um, you all are wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, thank you guys for coming and hopefully it won't sound like chipmunks next week. All right, take care everyone. All right, bye, 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 bye.